In this video, we're going to analyze a sort of a yo-yo. It's a cylinder that's been wrapped with string and tied to the ceiling and then allowed to let go. And because of that, although it's kind of hard to tell by this, this yo-yo is going to go like that and unwrap and begin to fall down. And we're asked to find the tension in the string while the hoop descends as the string unwinds. Now there's a couple of different ways to attack and solve this problem. I'm going to first solve it by looking at Newton's laws to attack the problem. So let me draw a free body diagram. And what I see in my free body diagram is I have a hoop. I have a tension of a string pulling up, T. I have weight pulling down, and that's the only two forces on this. And I can call that X and call that Y, and as that hoop goes this away, and it moves with an acceleration, then this point here is going to be connected to the unraveling of this particular yo-yo or hoop. So I'm going to call that for now plus because that's the way it's going to rotate. Now my problem here is that I don't know the tension and I don't know the acceleration. It's not in free fall. So that point right there which I could say is this point right here is a distance R which I also need in my free body diagram. Now I got all the critical angles, dimensions, and I have my axis. Let's calculate the sum of the torques about this point, which I will call point P. The sum of the torques about point P is equal to the I, moment of inertia, at point P times the angular acceleration. Now my problem is, is that I can calculate the torques if I choose to calculate it about this point. What if I calculated it about the center? Then I would have had trouble. Because if I did the center, the weight would produce no torque. The tension would produce a torque, but I don't know what its value is. And the angular acceleration, the alpha, I don't know it. So I wouldn't be able to find this or this if I calculated it about the center. But if I calculated about this point here, the tension then has no moment arm. It doesn't produce a torque. The weight produces a torque, but I know that force because I was given the mass. So that's why I choose this point P to do my torque calculation. Now I got weight times R, and it's in the positive direction, and that's equal to the moment of inertia at point P times alpha. Weight, that's mg, R is equal to IP times alpha. Now here's the thing, IP for the hoop is not given to me in the table in the textbook. I will have to calculate it using the parallel axis theorem. I at the center mass is MR squared to get IP I need to use parallel axis theorem in one of the previous videos. IP would be equal to IC plus the mass plus the distance between the two axes. Well this would be the center mass axis. There's the P axis. That distance between them is R. So it's that distance squared so I get MR squared for the center mass plus MR squared for the parallel axis. So IP is 2MR squared. If you don't see how I did that, you need to go and watch the video on using the parallel axis there. Now that I know the moment of inertia, I can plug that back up into here. So I have MGR is equal to 2 m r squared alpha. Let me go up here and change my pen. My mass cancels. One of the r's cancels. 
and I get G is equal to 2 R alpha. Now, I want to look at the no slip condition. Remember that this thing unwrapping is basically the same as a ball that's rolling on an inclined plane. This point here has a tangential acceleration and it's connected to that string. So the alpha from this direction, if you consider this to be pure rotation, is exactly the same alpha as if you consider it about that axis. And this point here, from this alpha to this r, gives you the tangential acceleration of the center of mass. So let me maybe draw that another picture so that maybe you can see what I'm saying clearly. This acceleration here, whatever that is, is this distance, which is r, times this alpha, because that is a tangential acceleration of an object going around in this circle. So this happens to be r times alpha. Now it happens to be in the negative y direction. So this happens to be r alpha is minus a sub y. So this is from the connection between alpha and tangential XL. So now I have G is minus 2 AY. So AY is minus G over 2. Now what am I going to do with that? Well, I'm going to do a lot with that, it turns out. From my free body diagram up there above, I know that the sum of the forces in Y is equal to MAY. And the forces are tension minus weight, T minus MG. And this is equal to M times, right there, minus G over 2. So therefore, T is equal to mg minus mg over 2, which is mg over 2. So it's half the weight of my hoop. Uh, I have a mass of 0 0.180 kilograms. So the tension T is 0 0.180 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared divided by 2. That'll give me my tension and I punch that in and I get 0 0.882 newtons. Alright, so much for that part. The time it takes the hoop to descend, 0 0.75 meters, constant acceleration, A is equal to minus G over 2, delta Y is minus 0 0.75 meters, and let me look to see how it started, I think it started from rest. Free end is held in place. The hoop's released from rest. Okay, so I know some things about it. V y naught was zero. So we can use kinematic equations because it's a constant acceleration problem. So let's see. What do we know here? We know that delta y is v y naught t plus one half a y t squared but that's zero so t is the square root of two delta y over a y is equal to the square root of two 
delta y over minus g over 2, which is the square root of minus 4 delta y over g. So t is the square root of minus 4 times minus 0 0.75 meters over 9.8 meters per second squared. It says, what is the angular speed of the rotating hoop after it's done that? Well, we could have found v squared is v naught squared plus 2 a y delta y. That's 0. So v is the square root of 2 times minus g over 2 times delta y. Plug that all in. That kills that. And I get 9.8 meters per second squared times 0.75 meters. So V is approximately, let's do that, 9.8 times 0.75 equals 2.711 meters per second and omega is V over R. This number divided by 0.08 meters. 33.9 rads per set. And that's all there is to this problem.